My name is uh, Ying Zhou and I live in Geelong all my life. I'm 25 this year. Geelong Adventures is a business that is involved with different events and initiatives with migrant workers. I also um, have a flair for taking people around the Geelong, um, a space that's commonly known for being a red light district or a place that's perceived as slightly dangerous. I love to show people you know, the other side of Geelong that's lesser known, like the social fabric of the space, who are the different groups of people here, and how they live and coexist together harmoniously. Fights, people taking drugs, or stuff like prostitution, they were all pretty common. So from a very young age, I was exposed to that kind of crime and vice. I kind of understood not to judge people, as quickly as I would. So one of the reasons why I started Geelong Adventures was actually to debunk all these myths about how migrant workers, you know, since the nature were transient workers, they posed as a danger to society, especially with the riot. Then there was a lot of misunderstanding between the migrant workers and Singaporeans. I felt that there was a huge potential in terms of bridging that gap between them. There's a huge lack of empathy from society about their condition. We choose to see them as an almost invisible population in our society but are not given enough um, recognition or any opportunity to integrate with um, the people here and therefore with the repercussions of the riot you know there was a huge gap in that understanding so I, wa I kind of wanted to close up the gap a bit. I started off with bag alley barbers. I actually tried to learn on YouTube, you know, how to cut hair. And I did that for six months. And I was cutting my own hair the whole time until I had enough confidence to actually attempt to cut on one of my good um, friends who lived just behind my house. Uh, he was a migrant worker from Bangladesh. And I felt like one of the opportunities for giving them a haircut was that the few dollars that they saved per month plus the comfort that they got. So Bagley Barbers was created uh, with me as the first barber. And subsequently, we kind of expanded, roped in a few other barbers. And eventually, we, we had a team and yeah, it was beautiful. So Migrant Mail was an initiative um, which we started to take a Polaroid of a migrant worker and we provide them with letter writing materials. Subsequently, we enclosed the picture with the letter and we send it back to their hometown for them and we sponsor postage with technology you know it's so easy to send a photo but often it's not easy to write out words you know when you write a letter it's kind of a different experience and sometimes you get to express more about you know how you feel so I think that um, that kind of responded really well and resonated with the migrant workers. My uh, son is 10 years old my daughter is 7 years old. Today I write like to my uh, mom and my daughter and son So Majula Blanja was conceptualized with the idea of three migrant workers and one Singaporean coming together to form a team and they would have a cook-off. So the cook-off event uh, happened at a couple of the dormitories which we worked closely with. Um, it was in line with the company called D-Wall. What we had eventually was 50 teams in one dorm and they were just cooking the food from their own culture. So we had Indian, Bangladeshi, Thailand, uh, Myanmar, Chinese food all in one place. It was beautiful seeing just everyone coming together and uh, enjoying food. It was kind of that interaction and that dialogue that they had with the migrant workers, um, which really opened minds and opened conversations between uh, the two parties. We kind of wanted to brighten up the space and make it more livable with the music, with the performances that we had lined up. And it was really to create an atmosphere that was a community-like kind of build up with all the different cultures kind of just expressing themselves in the same space and hopefully you know easing a bit of the social tensions that existed. I think it was a very good way to spend National Day because I think other than the stereotypes you usually hear about them, we don't get to interact with them in very close proximity. So yeah, it's very good. Uh, it's the first time I spent but uh, uh, it's really awesome. It's very good. Today, today actually here I saw many because I know cooking men but Today cooking, uh, try to good good la. But people see I wow, very nice nice cooking. I also want to win win like this. So today new fan have ready. I think so happy la. So happy. The feedback they've been getting has been pretty encouraging. Uh, people have shared like the amazing experience and friendships that they have created through the event. And uh, the bigger part is that how they have uh, changed, you know, uh, their mindset and also altered their behavior as a result of that and in turn just portraying them as um, a, more, a more humanistic and balanced construct of society.
with our pursuit for economic growth. We have also sometimes uh, have a lack of empathy or a spatial awareness to our surroundings. What I'm doing in Geylang can easily be done in any other areas. So education is a core part of my business because I believe whatever I'm doing cannot be done alone. It has to be amplified to the masses. So I hope with this kind of network that you know you slowly build up, you eventually have a community of people and that is what drives um, significant change on the top-down level. And eventually, hopefully, policies will be more um, skewed towards um, taking care of the marginalised groups.